Besides the main trio, there is a character in Kometsu no Yaiba who really carries the final act. Kano Suyuri is the younger sister of Shinobu Kocho, the insect Hashira, and Kane Kocho, the flower Hashira. But besides that, she not only stops Demon King Tanjiro Kamado, but goes on to form a lasting relationship with the Sun Breather. Lastly, she even slays an upper rank demon. In this video, we will be going over Kano's entire life story. Now, Kanao was born into neglect. Her parents did not even bother to name her and sold her into slavery. The abuse she faced left Kanao traumatized enough that she became a shell of a person. In fact, Kanao herself remembers that crying would lead to her being kicked and dragged around, as well as drowning. She didn't cry out, she didn't wail. Kanao simply accepted her existence, not crying being a defense mechanism that she developed from her severe abuse, at least until Shinobu and Kanae happen upon her. Kanao is small, dirty, and covered in fleas. The very opposite of the capable swordsman she becomes. The Kocho sisters decide to take Kanao in, but there are still some problems for Kanao. Shinobu knows that Kanao will not eat until she is told to do so. Her stomach will rumble, but Kanao will just sit there. Her lack of agency concerns Shinobu. Shinobu believes that if Kanao cannot make decisions on her own, she is useless. Kanae, being her opposite, remedies the situation with a coin. Kanao can make decisions by coin toss, which she does use quite frequently. Later on, the coin flip is exactly how Kanao decides to follow her heart. Kanao transitions well to life at the Butterfly Mansion and chooses her own name from a list that Shinobu presented. Fun fact, this list included the surnames of Shinobu and Oi Kanzaki. As we know, she settled on Kanao Suyuri. However, Kanao was not talented in housework or nursing, which leads to her study, flower breathing, merely by watching Kanae. Learning a breathing style this way is a bit of a feat, considering most swordsmen need a cultivator in order to learn a style. Kanao manages to not only learn flower breathing, but does so without a cultivator. But unfortunately, there is not a concrete timeline for this. It is known that Kanao learns flower breathing and that when she is 12, Kanae dies. There is a funeral held and out of everyone, Kanao is unable to cry. She is upset by the fact that she is unable to react emotionally to her adopted older sister's death. Yet Shinobu and the other Butterfly Mansion girls assure her. No one judges her. And thankfully, she does go on to avenge Kanae's death. But more on that later. Several years then pass, and once she is 16, Kanao sneaks away for final selection, a brutal week-long test for would-be demon slayers. She passes and remains silent at the ceremony for choosing their oar. Kanao even remains silent when Tanjiro and Genya have a mild altercation, which is interesting considering she goes on to value her comrades instead of simply ignoring them. Kanao is a petite young girl with black hair tied in a sideways ponytail. Her hair is held together by a hairpin from her deceased sister, Kanae. Later on, the hairpin is broken, so she replaces it with Shinobu's. Kanao wears a standard issue Demon Slayer uniform, except instead of the typical pants, she wears a knee-length skirt. In place of a Haori, Kanao wears a white cloak. Finally, instead of a Zori, she wears knee-high boots. Next up, we have her breathing style. But before we get into that, drop a like and subscribe to join the plot army me today. Now flower breathing is stylized after flowers and fruits as if the name wasn't a dead giveaway. The style uses elegant attacks meant for agility, but the most significant thing about flower breathing is its final form, which allows the user to gain almost superhuman sight. More on that later though. In the comments, let us know what your favorite breathing style is. It is a bit hard for me to pick a favorite, but I will say that I am a big fan of serpent breathing as these zigzags are just so dynamic. Anyway, after final selection, Shinobu takes Kanao as her Suguko. Now, a Suguko is someone taken under the instruction of a Hashira and are meant to serve as their successor. Before Kanao, Shinobu who had three past Sugukos that unfortunately all died. Now, due to the professionalism of the relationship, Kanao refers to Shinobu as master instead of sister. Shinobu was also against Kanao learning a breath style just like Kane. Regardless, she tells Kanao to behead demons without thinking or hesitating. In fact, this very attitude might be why Kanao tries to behead Nezuko, Tanjiro's demon sister. Speaking of which, let's delve into Mount Natagumo. Shinobu and Gyuto Miyoka, the water Hashira, are sent to the mountain on their master Kageya Ubiyashiki's orders. However, Mount Natagumo is the first instance Kanao doubts herself. She runs into Tanjiro and Nezuko as they try to escape Shinobu. Kanao is able to knock out Tanjiro. Nezuko continues to run away, even shrinking in size to avoid a sword swing. She doesn't fight Kanao at all, which Kanao does find strange but pushes to the back of her mind. After all, she was taught to kill demons, not think or hesitate. Fortunately, a crow signals the Kamado siblings are to be taken alive to headquarters. Kanao immediately stops attacking and asks Nezuko if she is a demon that they are looking for. 
Once it's been decided that the Kamado siblings can stay, they're taken to the Butterfly Mansion, Kanao's home. She is surrounded by butterflies. A calm, serene expression is on her face. The Kakushi carrying Tanjiro asks for permission to enter the mansion. However, Kanao does not reply. She merely continues to smile until Aoi directs them into the mansion. Truthfully, Kanao wears his vacant grin for a lot of her appearances. But later on, her anger and sadness will bleed through. Before we get to that though, let's focus on Kanao's role in the rehabilitation of the Kamaboko squad. As part of reflex training, the trio must defeat Kanao and Aoi in a cup game, which involves throwing medicine on your opponent before they can do so to you, in addition to a simple game of tag. Aoi is easy enough to defeat in these games, but Kanao proves to be a real challenge, so much so that both Inosuke and Zenitsu gave up after 5 days. But Tanjiro, being built different, continues to show up for training. He notes that Kanao is faster than him, and that she even smells different, like a Hashira. Which is pretty fair considering even an upper rank recognizes the skill that Kanao has. That being said, after learning total concentration breathing, Tanjiro is able to defeat her, which seems to surprise Kanao. Before he leaves for the Mugen train, Tanjiro pays a visit to Kanao. He thanks her for her help and gushes over her talent. Tanjiro is amazed by the fact that they joined at the same time, yet Kanao is already a Suguko. He sees her as someone to look up to, promising to work hard as well. Kanao only awkwardly smiles in response, until she flips her iconic coin, which lands on Tails. Finally, she speaks to Tanjiro. She tells him she was only doing as her master instructed, so there is no need for thanks. Tanjiro pushes her about the coin, and Kanao eventually relents. She explains flipping the coin is meant to make decisions for her. Quote, to decide things for which I have not been told to do. This causes Tanjiro to ask her what she wants to do. She tells him flatly that it doesn't matter because she cannot decide for herself. Tanjiro then flips her coin, saying that if it lands on heads, she must follow her heart. Surprisingly enough, it does land on heads. Kanao is amazed by this. She asks Tanjiro how it came up heads and he just tells her that he would have kept flipping the coin until it landed on heads. And this leaves her somewhat bewildered. The entire interaction with Tanjiro just proves the coin flip is arbitrary. Not to mention, instead of telling her not to think like Shinobu or use a coin to decide like Kanae, Tanjiro tells her to use her own agency. It is a defining moment for her that especially comes into full force with her bout with an upper rank. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's discuss Kanao standing up not only for herself, but her sisters as well. The sound of Shira Tengen Uzui came to the Butterfly Mansion in order to recruit girls for his mission. He forcibly tries to take Aoi and Naho. This causes Kanao to panic. She knows that he is a Hashira, someone that is above her. Yet Tengen is trying to take her sisters. She then thinks back to Tanjiro's advice and decides to forego her coin flip. Instead, Kanao tries to free Aoi and Naho. And seeing the ever quiet and passive Kanao take action inspires her sisters. They tackle Tengen. The sound being enough for Tanjiro to take notice. Kanao, her sisters, and Tanjiro protest Tengen taking Aoi and Naho. And thankfully, Inosuke, Tanjiro, and Zenitsu volunteer in the girls' places. Kanao standing up for herself really shows that she can overcome her trauma and think for herself. Not only this, but she is also able to overcome her fear in the situation. In fact, her emotions continue to surface. Speaking of which, her feelings are even present in her actions. When Tanjiro returns from the district, badly wounded, Kanao looks over him. He's unconscious for two months, and once he finally wakes up, Kanao is so surprised that she drops a vase, breaking it. She cries, telling him that she is glad he's awake. Now, after Swordsmith Village, Inosuke, Aoi, and other butterfly girls come in. But there is some ruckus as Inosuke crawls on the ceiling and fights with Aoi. Kanao, being concerned for Tanjiro, raises her voice at them. She tells everyone to be quiet because Tanjiro fell back asleep. It's a big development for her. Kanao goes from being silent to speaking on her own, even raising her voice. Given courage from others, Kanao slowly starts coming out of her shell. Later on, the demon lord Kibitsuji Muzan attacks the Ubayashiki residence. During the encounter, he unleashes the Infinity Castle, a space-changing blood demon art by upper rank 4, Nakime. The slayers, including Kanao, are dropped into it. Kanao is separated from her comrades. She runs around the castle until entering a garden-esque room. Inside are Shinobu and upper rank 2, Doma. A horrific sight greets her as Shinobu is being absorbed into Doma. Shinobu shoots a hand signal which Doma later on deduces to be a warning. Kanao leaps up and attacks Doma, however Doma is too fast for her. He casually tells Kanao it is dangerous to interrupt him while absorbing someone. And now all that is left of Shinobu is her hairpin, and the very sight sends Kanao into a rage. She has not only lost her older sisters, but her trainer as well. Finally, this is the battle that sees Kanao regain the ability to truly express herself, to actually mourn. During their bout, Akaza, upper rank 3, dies. Doma senses it but brushes the death aside to ask Kanao her name. Angry and huffing, she replies that she is Kanao Suyuri, the sister of Shinobu and Kanae. 
Doma then brings up the topic of Akaza again and cries. And seeing this rather false display of emotion, Kana-O immediately calls him out. She tells him to stop lying. Not only that, but she reveals Kana-A felt sorry for him as she died. Kana-O mocks him. If he cannot feel anything, why was he even born? Doma is taken aback and coldly tells her that, quote, this is the first time I've talked to such an unkind girl as you. And just as harshly, Kana-O replies that she hates him. She wants to send him to hell quickly. In her own words, there is no point to his existence, which certainly makes sense for Kano. She believes emotions are part of being a human being at this point. And this belief extends to even herself as Kano shows both anger and fear during this fight. Doma goes in to attack her with his fans, but she narrowly avoids them. Kano successfully disembowels the demon. Right after, Doma notes that she has increased her speed and is not breathing in his icy air. He thinks she may even be of higher skill than the Hashira he had just eaten. Again, further enforcing the idea that Kano Kana-O is extremely gifted in swordsmanship. After all, Tanjiro had previously compared her sent to a Hashira. There is a rather important reason for that though. In fact, let's talk about the revenge plot Kana-O takes part in. For a year, Shinobu consumed the Wisteria Flower Poison, and it becomes concentrated enough to even be present in her fingertips. She tells Kana-O this, and that in order to defeat Doma, the demon that killed their sister, Kana-A, she must be killed and eaten. Kana-O is understandably upset by this. She will lose not one, but two sisters. Once Doma is nerfed by the poison, Kana-O is meant to kill him. Finally, it is revealed exactly why Shinobu took her on as her Suguko. They will exact revenge together, and Kana-O's strength will make up for what Shinobu lacks. Together, they can defeat Doma. This burning hatred Kana-O has manifests itself. She is shaking and is overheating with rage. It's such an intense feeling that Kana-O herself is not used to it. Such a strong human emotion that goes to show the journey Kana-O has undergone. She now speaks for herself, feels emotion, and expresses it the same way anyone else would. She goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doma, keeping up with him. The upper right notices this and attempts to gouge at her eyeballs. But yet again, she dodges the attack, but only just barely. Kana-O is only able to keep up because of her tactical observations, yet her keen eyesight will not stop the demon from stealing her sword. He does it before Kana-O even realizes it is gone. It is a trap he sets. Doma tells her to come and get it, all while setting a gust of freezing wind towards her. The blizzard seems almost hopeless for Kana-O. All she resolves to do is to find the area with the least amount of damage. But thankfully, she is saved by Inosuke, who slashes away the blizzard. Inosuke gloats about beating the demon, but notices Kana-O's disheveled appearance. He tells her Shinobu will be upset by her injuries. To this, Kana-O stays silent, and Inosuke works out that the insect Hashira is in fact dead. Doma then happily exclaims that Shinobu is not truly dead, that she will live on inside of him. He's not wrong, her poison certainly will. Regardless, Kana-O trembles. Inosuke brashly charges Doma, and Kana-O warns him of Doma's blood demon art. However, this rash move is not fruitless. Inosuke is able to steal back Kana-O's sword, telling her to not let Doma take it again. Inosuke continues to fight the demon until he is unmasked. Yet again, Doma's movement is so fast that neither Slayer notices. Regardless, Kana-O is still shocked. She tries to calm him. The swordsman is rather peeved, if not angry, by the theft of his boar mask. It is then that Doma Doma reveals he has a connection to Inosuke as well. He details meeting Inosuke's mother and subsequently murdering her. The laid back way Doma tells the story enrages Kana-O as well. The trigger being that to Doma, the life Inosuke's mother led was meaningless. Both slayers continue to fight the upper rank. However, Doma believes the fight is dragged out. So he employs frozen dolls that are as strong as him and can record the battle. Yet Shinobu's poison will come back to haunt him. Just as the demon tries to leave, he begins to literally melt, which was something that Kana-O anticipated. Shinobu had not only shared the plan, but entrusted her Suguko with defeating their sister's killer. Kanao notices the icy clone stop and shatter. She reveals that Shinobu's death was not in vain, that the poison is now taking effect. She tells Inosuke to press the attack. However, the demon is desperate now. He summons a massive statue that can blow frozen wind and attack with its giant arms. With this, Kanao realizes that now is the time to use the last form of flower breathing, Equinoctical Vermilion Eye. This technique is meant to only be used as a last ditch effort. The user expands their vision to the maximum, meaning time appears to move slower for them. But this form is not without risk. The user can become blind in one or both eyes. The strain of the technique can rupture blood vessels. Regardless, Kana-O decides to use it. Yet this will not be the only dire situation she uses the technique for. She thinks back to Shinobu, the fact that she wants to protect her to go back home with her. This thought only fuels Kana-O as she attempts to behead Doma despite becoming partially frozen. She struggles to cut through the demon's neck, at least until Inosuke throws his swords, which push Kana-O's blade through Doma's neck. In the aftermath, Kana-O finds Kana-A and Shinobu's hairpins. Kana-A's is broken, but Shinobu's is still intact. 
From using the final form of flower breathing, she is now blind in one eye. Kana O then cries. She thinks of her friends and the fact that Inosuke helped her avenge her sisters. She holds the two hairpins and feels the presence of her two sisters, and the emotion of it proves to be enough for Kana O to openly weep. At long last, she expresses the pent of feelings she had harbored for so long. She cries not only for what had happened, but for Kanae as well. It is such a beautifully well done moment. We see this timid girl become not only a talented swordsman, but someone not afraid to cry. Afterwards, Kanao and Inosuke meet up with Zenitsu and Murata inside of the castle. Now at this point, the castle itself is unstable due to the struggle between Yushiro, Tamayo's assistant, and Muzan. This causes everyone to burst through the city streets. There, Kanao, Inosuke, and Zenitsu join to fight against Muzan, the three putting on seals to do so. He doesn't notice at first, but is is able to break their stealth. Even with going blind in one eye, Kanao continues to fight. Despite being hit directly by one of Muzan's whips, Kanao puts on another seal. However, the Hashira around her are pushed back by Muzan. Exhausted, Kanao falls to her knees. She is the last standing swordsman. The physical strain of tiredness and hopelessness finally begin to hit her. Kanao is unable to stand. She thinks back to her goal. She must defeat Muzan, even if it kills her. But before Muzan can land a killing blow, Tanjiro shows up once more. Kanao is overwhelmed by his appearance. Like the other slayers, she must have assumed he was dead. Tanjiro then tells Ikakushi to tend to her as he faces Muzan. While the fight against Muzan rages on, Yushiro tends to the injured. He gives Zenitsu, Inosuke, and Kanao an antidote for Muzan's poisonous blood. Despite that, she is out of the fight for some time. Her final action against Muzan involves using Flower Breathing Final Form to inject a demonic Tanjiro with an anti-Muzan serum. And thankfully, it works. Everyone around Tanjiro rejoices once he wakes up, as an exhausted Kanao smiles at him, tears in her eyes. Three months later, Later after Muzan's defeat, Tanjiro meets with Kanao under a Sakura tree. She then tells Tanjiro about the tree. It was planted by the first Flower Breath user. Interestingly enough, its name is Victory. Tanjiro asks Kanao about her eye. She tells him that it doesn't hurt anymore and that she still has some sight. She then tells him about Tanemi, the Wind Hashira, gifting her the Serpent Hashira Obanai Iguro snake. And eventually, in this relatively peaceful world free of demons, she marries Tanjiro. But we are not done yet. Time passes to the future, where Kanata and Sumihiko Kamado, Tanjiro and Kanae's descendants, go out for school. Kanata is punctual and travels alongside the Agatsuma siblings. Meanwhile, Sumihiko sleeps in and travels with Tojiro Rengoku, the descendant of Senjuro. Sumihiko resembles Tanjiro, where Kanata is more like Kanao in looks and personality. This casual slice of life is a rather peaceful and deserved ending to the hardships the characters faced, especially Kanao. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.